Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and this is my review of Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. So I saw the film 7 p.m. Thursday night uh, on the Cine Capri screens at Harkins Theaters, and they handed out these really cool, like, thick board posters. These pretty cool buttons and these pretty nice t-shirts that even have like the Guardians of the Galaxy emblem here on the sleeve. But yeah, it was really awesome. I've been to a million movies, 7 p.m. showing Thursday night, and I've never gotten anything like this. So it was a really fun experience right off the bat. But like most, I really enjoy the first Guardians of the Galaxy. It's not quite as high on my overall Marvel ranking as I think it is for a lot of people, but it's definitely a really fun film and probably Marvel's just pure funnest film to date. So like most, I've been in love with little baby Groot and I was super excited to get a film full of Baby Groot. Thus, I was pretty excited for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So how did it end up playing out? Well, I think it's a solid film, a solid entry in the Marvel Universe. Not quite the best, but still a fun time. So let's kick things off with the positives. First of all, I think most all of our cast is great yet again. I think Chris Pratt is really good in this Star-Lord role. It's pretty much custom-made for him and it plays to all his strengths. He gets to do a little bit more deep acting this time around and I think he just nails it across the board. I also think that Zoe Saldana added a little bit of flair into her Gamora but it worked really well. And then we had Bradley Cooper voicing Rocket and his voice acting is just so good for Rocket Raccoon. And I can't really compliment too much on Vin Diesel just because I don't know how necessary having his voice for a baby Groot is, but I mean, the voice works for baby Groot, so there you go. And I think Michael Rooker, who kind of joins the team as Yondu, was also really, really good here. So most of our cast was really strong. You'll notice there was a couple people missing, and we'll get to those weak links here in a moment. But overall, the world building was so fantastic. I mean, some of the scenery they thought up was amazing. And I think overall, the visuals were fantastic. There were a couple scenes where you're like, ooh, that's super green screen, or oh, no, not quite there. But generally, everything looked really cool. Plus, this movie had a ton of really fun Easter eggs and nods, including a grand total of four post credit sequences, all of which I think are worth staying for. But honestly, the MVP for me was Baby Groot. I know people were like worried he was going to get overused or just shoved in too much or, or become saturated throughout the film. It would just be an overload of Baby Groot. But he actually is not in the movie all that much. And he's utilized so well. He's so freaking adorable. He's so cute in his mannerisms. I, I mean, I loved Baby Groot. I do think he absolutely ends up stealing the show. And as I said in my opening, I think this is just a really fun movie. It's a fun film. It has a nice adventure. You enjoy spending time with the people and you just have a good time watching it on a really big screen in a really packed theater. It makes for a fun movie going experience. However, I also have quite a few problems when it comes to Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Obviously. So first let's go ahead and circle right back around to those cast members who don't quite do what they need to do. The first of those is Dave Bautista. I didn't really find him to be that good in the first Guardians and he's no better. I actually think he's a little bit worse in this Guardians of the Galaxy. I think part of that is he's given a lot more to do in this film and he's not able to really stretch it. And in turn I think the entire character of Drax is inconsistent. So he goes from being this just really kind of jolly, fun, funny character to going back to that like literal person we knew in the previous film. So I guess if he doesn't pick up or understand things that are not literal before, I mean, is his species able to like detect that? I don't know. It's just a big inconsistency in the character and I think people did respond well to the character in the first one so they, they gave him more to do and he just couldn't handle it. 
And then we had Karen Gillan as Nebula. Now, I don't think she was bad. I actually think Karen Gillan as an actress did a good job. It's just the character of Nebula was shoehorned in. Like, she felt very much forced and pushed into the story where it just was too much. And I think this movie definitely suffers from trying to expand the team. So far out, we get all of these characters, and each of these characters has a relationship that they are trying to build or maintain, and then it just kind of feels a little bit overcrammed. And that's a problem for me for the whole movie, is it all feels a little bit convoluted. The entire storyline is very convoluted and is like, what? what's going on? To the point that we don't really even understand what the end goal of our villain is here, what the mechanism he's using is supposed to accomplish. I mean, we get a quick like snapshot of what's going to happen to the planets in his plan, but we don't, we don't even know what that substance is that is taking over these planets. We don't know what it really does. We don't know really what the purpose is for doing this to the planets. Um, so it just, it was a hollow plan from our main villain. And then of course the cleanup aftermath on these planets is also a big question. And of course we have that storyline with Star-Lord and his father. We have this ongoing storyline between Star-Lord and Gamora. We have the sisterly storyline between Gamora and Nebula. We have the storyline between Star-Lord and Yondu. We have the storyline between Yondu and Rocket. We have the storyline between Rocket and Groot. So it just all is just so much. We have the storyline between Mantis and Drax. So much going on in this movie that it just feels really convoluted. And in turn, it starts to get weighed down. So I think overall it is a really fun viewing experience, but I don't think it's as fun as the first. I think it has a lot more jokes that don't quite land. It has a lot of sentimentality that works but it also has a lot of sentimentality that feels very much forced and doesn't quite work how I think the filmmakers wanted it to. In line with that, I think that they struggle with the balance between comedy and emotions. Like there are moments where it feels grand and it feels emotional and then they throw up ill-timed joke in like oh we've been serious for a little bit too long we better do something really stupid. There's also like potty humor in here that goes on for way too long. And the entire character of Mantis is so weird. She goes from being like a really lovable character and a somewhat intelligent character to being so dumb. Like they push it past naive, which is what I know they were trying to do, into just making her pretty stupid. But I do love that we have Mantis there. I do think she's going to be a good addition moving forward. Plus between having her, Nebula, and Gamora, it's nice to like fill this team out with some females. So. That's a positive for sure. So overall, I do think that Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was a little bit more ambitious than the first in its scope, in its goals, in its emotional goal, but it ultimately tries to stuff too much into this film and ends up falling short of what the first was able to accomplish. But just for the spectacle, just because it's another piece in the Marvel machine and it is a well-crafted film that is beautiful to look at and ultimately a really fun time, I do think this does deserve a full price ticket. I think if you've liked the other Marvel films, if you liked the first Guardians of the Galaxy, you're going to really enjoy this one as well. So that has been my review of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead, click like down below, and subscribe to the channel so you are always up to date on our latest videos. Also, join in on the discussion. Have you seen Guardians of the Galaxy 2? What did you think? And what are your thoughts on that first Guardians film? Where does it rank in your Marvel ranking? Let me know either in the comment section down below, or you can hit me up on Twitter. I love you all so much for your support. Mwah! Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!